Okay, so can you hear me? I'm just going to maybe just slide this back a bit. Just slide that across. Yep, one, two, three, up. Oh. That's good, that's enough. Okay, let's pray. Holy Spirit, um, we have a request that you would open the eyes of our hearts that we can see Jesus Christ in us. Amen. Okay, so I've got a question for you. And each of you ask it for yourself. Is Jesus Christ in you? So turn inside and ask inside, Jesus Christ, are you in me? Just stop, sit quietly and say, Jesus Christ, are you in me? And listen. Jesus Christ, are you in me? Okay, so just listen quietly on the inside. Jesus Christ, are you in me? Jesus Christ, are you in me? Jesus Christ, and you'll, you'll hear an answer. Now, the gospel message is that Jesus Christ is in you and you never put him there. You find him there. The one who made everything and holds everything together. We've discovered him in us. And as we wander through that, we've got lots of questions because it's not as, not as all nice and simple as we think because what have we got? Who here has a sense in their body of flesh, of parts of them they don't like? Like that lovely song that you sang, the song that you sang about the tension, not what I could be. Yeah? Who has a sense in them at times of what Paul calls the flesh? Yeah? yeah? Anybody not? <laughs> I see that hand. <laughs> okay, pull out your Bibles. And we're, just, we're going to be doing skating across a lot of things today and hopefully pulling it together. To be finished before five o'clock tonight. When Paul's talking about flesh, we've got to ask ourselves, what's he talking about? Is he talking about this? No. He's not talking about human bodies. He's talking about something else. So he says, the works of the flesh. He's got a whole bunch of axes here. He's got, he's got contentions, jealousies. He's got sexual problems, adulteries and fornication. He's got wrath and selfishness, wrath, and he's got all selfish ambition. Envies, murders, my goodness. Heresies. Drunkenness and all drug-related things. Etc. Etc. It's a funny thing, isn't it? We call the flesh. What is our flesh? Have you ever asked yourself, what is your flesh? Because there's a really funny thing going on here. When you look at these things around the edge, what would you define them as? If we're getting ourselves a bit funny, we would define them as sin, wouldn't we? Would you? Would you say that all these things on the edge are sin? Yeah? Yes. Okay. So we've got a nice black centre and we think of these as sin. Okay. And what happens when you put law against these things on the outside? Does it work? What does it say in Romans? Romans 8 verse 4, does it ro open up Romans? Four. 
For what the law could not do, because it was weak through the flesh, the law is targeting what? The outside? The actions? What's the problem? The inside. So, you've got to ask yourself, because none of you have a problem with anything, so let's just speak about me. <laughs> what's, what's the inside? What's our flesh? What is it? Sinful. It's sinful, but what part of me is it? It's still part of me. Mind, heart. Yeah, it involves my mind, involves my heart, deep part of me. What is it? Okay, it's the old man. I don't mind that, that's good. What's the old man? This is, this is really fundamental, isn't it? Because if we don't get this really clear in our being, we're going to slide off into religion. We're going to slide off into paying God off somehow. We end up going to church or paying money or giving time or, or doing obeisance. Hang on, we just, we just asked a question at the start of today. We said, is Jesus Christ in you? And the answer you, most of you would have heard on the inside was, yes I am. Yes. A voice saying, yes I am. Christ is in you and you never put him there. Okay, so what's this thing here? Human nature, let, let's just throw something into you. Could it be that's the deep parts of us that don't know the love of God? Is the, is, the, is the flesh the part of us that doesn't know the embrace of God? When you're alone... You know what's going on here, boys? When, when you're alone and when you're hurt and you're scared... You go looking for comforts or you get jealous and spiteful and comparison and vengeful and take it out on somebody else. Can you see that the flesh is where we don't know the love of God? Who here has got flesh in them? Yeah. None of you? <laughs> okay. Okay, this is a really interesting thing. Jesus Christ is in you. I've got another question for you. Do you think that Jesus Christ might be... Hoo, 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 might, might be in your flesh? Yes. Yes. Oh, ouch. Would that mean that Jesus Christ might be in the parts of me that I don't like? Would that mean that Jesus Christ might be in the parts of me that I'm scared of? Would that mean that Jesus Christ might be in the parts of me I'm trying to keep hidden and walled off from you all so you can't see it, the parts of me that I'm ashamed about? Because I can't turn up at a meeting like this, can I, and let people see my deep parts, which might be shameful to me. I've got to look good for the group, don't I? Uh-huh. Open John 1. John 1, verse 14. And the word became shining with a halo... And dwelt among us. Does it say that? <coughs> and the word became shining with a halo. Does it say that? No. What does it say? Flesh. Oh my goodness. Oh, hang on, what's going on here? We've got a few problems going on. Number one, that what we call sin is actually a fruit and not a root. This is a fruit. Most of what people call sin and say stop sinning is a fruit 
of something deeper. So you can jam that off and it's going to squirt out somewhere else. You can lock this one off and it'll shoot out that way. You can suppress it somewhere. So what are you going to do? You're going to put more vices on yourself? You're going to put more band-aids on yourself? You're going to lock yourself down a bit? So don't we need to stand back and look at this because something's funny. It said, you said, Bruce, the word became flesh. My goodness, what's going on? Why is God doing this? Well, why, why is God doing this? Why would he do that? Why would he enter our darkness? God, I'm going to put a few verses up on the board which we're going to kick into later. I think we're going to have to look at this and we're going to have to look at why Jesus died and we're going to have to look at the problem if we've said many times do you remember we've, we've said there's a father and a son and a spirit do you remember these diagrams yeah and for the sake of the people at the back I'm just going to pick this up So you've got Father, Son and Spirit and where's the universe? Inside God. Is that right? So it's not God, God's over here and God makes the universe over by that steel plank, aluminium plank. No. The universe is inside God like a womb because is there an outside to God? Can you go along and say God stops here and something else starts? No. So where's the universe? inside God like a womb ladies get this guys find it more difficult right the universe is inside God uh huh all clear hmm and God makes the universe and the universe is sort of sitting there and you know what he does he gives this thing commands he says bring forth and it does and he, he says hmm that's good or they say it's good because the Father made all things through the Word uh -huh, in the Spirit. So the Father, Word and Spirit are going, mm-hmm, that's good. Okay, so they say, bring forth light. Boom, the Big Bang. Separate the light from the darkness, which is the light and the matter forming, pulling apart from them. That's good. And he keeps speaking. Keeps speaking to this universe. So however you see creation... Whether you see creation in six days, I'm not interested. Whether you see it in millions of years, I'm not interested. I'm not, not entering a debate on that. So you can rest your dragons aside. Okay, we're not going to have a fight about that today. It's not the point. So it's not the point of the story. So don't get tangled on that. But do notice. Do notice. God speaks to the universe. And the universe responds. And then the next thing he says, it's good. And he does it again, he speaks again, now do this, and it responds and he says, it's good. And he speaks again, and it responds and he says, and he speaks again, and it responds and he says, speaks again, and responds and he says, about seven times, and he says, speaks again, and responds and says, very good. That's pretty good, huh? 
So it's going along. <coughs> and then you go into chapter 2 of, of Genesis. And then God says, it's not good. Oh yeah. What's the not good? Okay, so we've had good, good, very good, and then a not good. Got a question for you. Is Adam out here? Is Adam in here? Is Adam wrapped up in the Father, the Word and the Spirit? Is he in face-to-face -face communion? Is he a solitary human? Yes. Is he alone? No. Oh dear. Oh dear. Can you just check that cable? I think it's like tight. Thanks, man. I always get worried when people play in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a bad sense of humour. You'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Is it down? Is it down? Volume? Down the back. Is the volume down? <coughs> okay. And he pats me on the bottom. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, so he pats me on the bottom. A bit worried about him. Um, okay, so good, 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 very good, not good, alone, curious. How can he be alone? He's in the presence of the Father, Son and Spirit. Curious. He's solitary. He's alone. Hmm, it's funny. Let's go on. In the middle of the garden there's two trees, aren't there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What are the two trees called? We've gone through this many times. Yeah. Tree of life. And what's the other tree? Knowledge. And what's the knowledge of tr good and evil? Conscience. The conscience. Knowledge of good and evil involves self-awareness, but it also involves your conscience. This is really strange because back over here, what accuses me of all these things that I do? Conscience. My conscience. Which creature introduced the conscience into the human race? Satan. Satan. Oh, something's funny going on here. The accuser got us to eat the fruit and then the accuser accuses me when I'm... Oh, so it's all tangled with this, isn't it? How do we work this out? Let's ask another question. Who, who ate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil first? Eve? Is that right? Or was it Adam? But doesn't it say... Hmm, let's get this right because this is a little bit confusing. Can someone read Romans? Romans chapter 5? <coughs> Can someone read Romans 5 verse 12? I'll read it out. Therefore, just as through Eve eating the fruit, <laughs> sin entered the world. Just as through one woman, sin entered the world. As through one man. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What's going on here? It's going to be a little bit more tangled. A couple more steps. Can you track with me? Think you can track with me? OK, 
Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 2. I do not permit a woman to teach or have authority over man, says the Apostle Paul. Adam was made first, then Eve. Hmm, now listen to this. Adam was not deceived. What's going on here? But the woman was deceived. Oh my goodness. Is Paul saying that when the woman ate the fruit she was tricked and deceived by the snake yeah and he was saying that when Adam ate the fruit he was not tricked by the snake he was complicit ouch ouch good good very good not good it is not good for man to be alone so I'm in the middle of the Father, Son and Spirit. I'm in the middle of embrace. I'm in the middle of hugs and I can't see it. I'm alone. God says, this is not good. You weren't made for this. Hmm. What are you going to do with man? Let's bring in some animals. That doesn't work. Let's put him to sleep and take his rib and some stem so as to make a woman. Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. That's working. And I say to the woman, Woman, there's two trees in the Garden of Eden. You're not allowed to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we make it a bit different. We take it further than what God says. We say, look, don't even touch it. Okay? But I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. The angel, angel is a ministering spirit, is there and for whatever reason this angel is there with me and the angel starts getting into the ear of my wife. How many guys in the room? Guys, hold up your hands. All guys, hold up your hands. If you're married, hold up your hands. Okay. Then I want you to put your hand down if... Leave your hands up as men, if you're married or been married. Put your hand down if you would tolerate and let any man start putting corrupt ideas into the head of your wife. Put your hand down if you'd tolerate it. No, hands going down. What's going on? I'm alone. I'm alone. Father, Son and Spirit, love, I have already turned. Adam has already turned. As sin entered the world through one man. The mystery of iniquity. We don't understand how this happened. Adam turned and in the process Adam's turned he's alone he's turned and this dear old wife's with him and he just lets the snake at his wife or the creature with legs at that stage at his wife and he doesn't stop it and Timothy says he was not deceived and he lets the woman cop it and she cops it and she eventually eats and she hands it to Adam and he doesn't say, oh, we're not meant to do it. And God comes along, says, Adam. And then Adam gets sent out of the garden. But if you read the story, the woman doesn't. The serpent gets judged. And we're in a place where, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? And that cry and that sense of aloneness goes back from Adam right through every one of us. You've got the aloneness in you? Yeah. Have you got the cry for Adam, where are you in you? Yeah. 
and then out of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we'd move from this to an understanding where we think God's over here and we're here and we start doing religion and we start climbing back to God because we are blind and we don't know that Christ is in us what are you going to do what are you going to do you've got people with flesh in them flesh is parts of them that don't know the love of God bits that are alone and out of this flesh now all manner of mess is going through history what are you going to do to them they're creating all sorts of religions because God's out there and trying to climb to God and do all sorts of things to try and keep God happy they're doing child sacrifices they're killing things what are we going to do in the bottom of their soul they don't know they don't know they're alone they're hurt they're scared one part of the Father, Son and Spirit is going to become human and that part is not just going to become human but it's going to go into the blackness of us and so Jesus Christ comes into the and the word became flesh the word became flesh and drives deep down into the depths of humanity and he starts uncovering another, another word for this is blindness where we can't see another language is the darkness enters the darkness enters the blindness now under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we now start feeling separated don't we we still feel separated from God and under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we have a now have an awareness of what we call sin don't we and so then we get in ourselves in terrible tangles because we think that all of these things are the sin eating of the tree was a fruit of being alone there was a turning in Adam there was a turning where Adam turned and could not see the face of his father the face of the word that could not be in the presence of God even though he was made that way and he was lost and he was in darkness and the woman's gone and eaten the tree and Adam's taken it after the woman but sin entered the world before that now this becomes a problem for us because we get tangled now as a human race because now when we start looking at the work of Jesus we can miss the point how can we miss the point because now because of the tree of knowledge of good and evil when we start talking about the work of Christ we think that it's oh Jesus has come to fix up my sin oh that is Jesus has come to fix up my sin on the edges and therefore what we do when we come to the death of Christ 
we can we we can view oh well look God can't look upon sin so God can't look upon sin so what Jesus done Jesus has become sin for me and he's he's paid off God so Jesus has taken my punishment because God needs it because he's holy because we've now tangled in this good bad thing God needs punishment because he's holy and Jesus has come to take my punishment no 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 it doesn't work that way if you read all these verses where Jesus is talking about why he died not one of those verses talks about Jesus having to pay off God but not one of those verses talks about Jesus having to do something to keep the Father happy all of those verses talk about the Son of God who's entered our flesh now coming along and us putting him to death. He says the Son of Man will be handed into the hands of sinful men. The Son of Man will be handed into the hand of the chief priests and the scribes. The Son of Man will be handed into the hand of the Gentiles. He'll be handed up. They will mock him. They'll treat him with contempt. They will crucify him. In other words... God's going to become flesh and in our darkness we are going to kill him. We, us as the human race, we are going to kill God who becomes flesh and he's going to submit himself to it and through that he is going to get to the bottom of our flesh and he's going to go down to the deepest parts of our flesh and be in us so in you and in me in your flesh that you hate at the bottom is the one who loves you the gospel drives us back inside ourselves in our flesh to the parts of you that you hate and in the parts of you that you hate at the bottom it will be the arms of God which means the gospel says no part of you no part of me is to be ignored oh, but that part of me is horrible Bruce I've got bits of me I hate yes I've got bits of me that think things and do things that are horrible yes I've got to amputate that part of me. Good luck with that one. When it's worked, come back and speak with me. Because it doesn't work. Suppression cannot work. Amputation cannot work. We started with the problem. Sin entered the world. Sin, which is the turning away, has led to the mess. We then want to categorise sin as actions inside of you is Jesus Christ and you never put him there he is in you now at the parts of you that you hate and I've got a question for you as you sit with me now do this turn back inside Christ is in you Christ is in you. Christ has entered you. He's in you, underneath you. Turn your face towards him on the inside. And you say, I can't do this. I can't, Bruce. I can't turn my face. And I go, no, you can't. You can't turn your face. You can't fix yourself. So, the one who became flesh entered our aloneness. And on the cross he cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, 
why have you forsaken me, which is a kickstart of Psalm 21, but he's sharing in our aloneness. He's going to the bottom of our flesh and at the bottom of your flesh now and at the bottom of my flesh now, in the part of me I don't like, in the part of me that you don't like, there is one who knows the face of the Father and he's there now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to fix myself. No, you don't have to fix yourself. Well, how do I become aware of this one in me? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is called the what? Christ. Jesus Christ. What does Christ mean? Anointed. He's anointed. So Christ is in you and who anoints him in you? The Holy Spirit. And what's the Spirit revealing? Jesus Christ is in you. Well, I've got a question. Is this one in you? Is he alone? No. Does he know the face of the Father? Yes. Does he call his father Abba and Dad? Yes. Oh my goodness. You mean inside me, inside the part that I don't like in my flesh, at the bottom of me is one who knows Dad's face? Yes. And he's never going away. I will never leave you nor forsake you even into the end of the age. I'm with you always. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Abide in me and I in you. He's abiding in you. Oh my goodness. Let's look at John chapter 14 verse 20. that day you will know that I, that's Jesus is in his father that's nice well that's good for you Jesus you're in your father oh, but it goes on and John 14 verse 20 and you're in me and I am in you and given that the word became flesh, which part of you is he also in? He's in my flesh. And as the spirit blows on you, you'll start to understand that Jesus Christ is in you, but he's also in the parts of you that you don't like and then you can start going oh my goodness I have felt I have felt alone in these parts of me which goes right back to dear old Adam I've been tangled for years I keep thinking that my actions are the issue. Alone. Hands up here if you've got kids. Okay. So your kids happen to run off to Melbourne or Sydney and they get involved in the drug trade and they get involved in prostitution and all sorts of mess and you don't see your kids for a number of years. When your kids come back and they finally start talking with you are you happy when they give you a hug and come back or do you want them to list all their sins and sort it out before you invite them into your house? Which one? The embrace. Yeah? They're your kids. You want them hugged. What do you think Father, Son and Spirit have been doing for the centuries and millennia they have been working on the human race? Adam turned. 
It's not good. Bring him animals, doesn't work. Get him a woman to try and save him. He corrupts the woman, she's deceived. He's not, he's still there. The mystery of iniquity is still running. The only way through this is to fulfil adoption. They have to know they're children of God. God's going to become human. But becoming human, he doesn't come with a shining halo. He becomes one of us and he plunges into our darkness to the bottom of our flesh where we are alone. He plunges into us where we hate ourselves because the whole time now we've got our conscience accusing us. Our conscience is saying you're bad, you're bad, you're good, you're bad, you're good, good, bad, good. And we think God's like our conscience. And the whole time God's saying, come back and give me a hug. And we say, we're not good enough. I've done things, I haven't done things, I've done things, I haven't done things. The Father's saying, I want you in my arms. And we go, I haven't confessed my sins, I don't know my sins yet. Missing the point. And even now we still define our sin by our actions. And at the bottom of us is the Father's Son underneath your flesh. He now has a command for you. And listen to his command. His command is, let me love you. So now, if you can shut your eyes, all of you just shut your eyes and go to the part of yourself that you don't like. The part of yourself which you've been grappling with. The part of yourself where you hate yourself. The part of yourself you got walled away. The part of yourself you won't go near. And understand that Jesus Christ is there. And understand that to that part of you, Christ is already there and he's saying, Let me love you. So, so Holy Spirit, could you please take what Jesus has and share it with my soul into my pain and into my broken part and into my mess because you have placed him there and he is my saviour and he's even the saviour in the parts of me that I don't like and that's why he's the saviour of all men especially those who believe so we celebrate today that Christ is in you and we celebrate today that you never put him there because shock horror he's where you would never put him he's where you would never put him because you don't even want to go there yourself hallelujah and now Christ at the bottom of you is saying let me love you it's John 13, John 15 let me love you and the Spirit's blowing over you and the Spirit's taking what Christ has and sharing it with you and Christ is the Father's Son so you are his sons and daughters and the Spirit takes Christ's joy my joy I leave with you the Spirit takes Christ's peace my peace I give to you and then your conscience says yeah but I'm not good enough because I've sinned sinned yeah I've sinned I've sinned I've sinned I've sinned I've sinned and Jesus says yes and the wage of sin is death you're yes and when I died you died with me oh my goodness oh my goodness I died with Christ oh my goodness all my sins are gone yeah and by the way guys sins aren't the issue because at the end I'm wanting you back in my arms with a big hug. Let me love you. Oh, my sins are a problem. You missed the point. I said the wages of sin are death. And when I died, you died with me. Oh, my goodness. You mean my sins are washed away? Yes. But that's not the whole goal, Bruce. Come into my arms. Receive the cuddle. Let me love you. Oh, my goodness. And so the good news, the proclamation is Christ is in you. You never put him there. He's in the parts of you that you would never put him in. Because you don't even go there yourself. Thank God. And all your sins that you call sin are washed away. 
And all the things that the Father calls sin, which is us turning away, is now dealt with because his Son is in us. And he's saying, let me love you. And that's the gospel. That's the good news. I think that's all. Thanks, guys.